Hi there and welcome back to a new video. In today's MATLAB episode I want to show you how you can use the ODE45 solver in MATLAB to solve an ordinary differential equation. So before we get started let me just say that I have seen in the analytics from YouTube that only 18% of people watching my videos are actually subscribed to my channel. So please if you like the videos and they are useful to you make sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure to also hit the notification bell. So without further ado, let's jump right into the MATLAB script. As you can see, at the beginning of course, we have our three magic C's. Clear command window, clear the workspace and close all windows. Then we straight move on to the parameter definition. Right here we have the mass defined as one kilogram. Then we have the stiffness of the spring defined by one. Damping coefficient is 100 and the force is defined as zero Newton. In the next step, we define the initial and boundary conditions. For the time, I have said that we want to go from the start time to the end time of 20 seconds in steps of 0.01 seconds. This one times two here is wrong because what I had previously is from one to 20 and we will do that in a few moments and you will see what the big difference actually is. So big quote unquote. So it's not that big, but you will see what I mean. If you go back, this is what we calculate first and then I'll show you what the other time definition does. So this is a 1 by 2001 vector. Then we have the initial conditions defined with the velocity being 0 and the excitation being 0 0.01 meters. Then we have to give some solver options to the solver which we'll use and in ODE set we define the relative tolerance as well as the absolute tolerance. We won't go into depth on what this actually means in case you want to know more about that. The MATLAB documentation is a great help and explains it quite good on what these tolerances actually mean. In the next step, we say that we want to have a vector put out, so a time vector and a y vector, which gives us the position. And we want to use this solver, ODE45, which takes the state space form as a function, which I've defined in another script right here. We'll come back to that in a few moments. Then we define the time, which we'll put into the solver, which is the time right here from 0 to 20 in steps of 0 0.01 seconds. Then we'll give the solver the initial conditions, the solver options as we've just defined, and then all of our parameters, mass, damping coefficient, stiffness coefficient, as well as our force, which of course is in our case zero, but we'll take it anyway in case we want to make adaptions to the force. So going to the state space form, what we actually did is that we rearranged or formulated in another way a second order differential equation and we have transformed it into n differential equation of first order. If you want to know how to get to this line right here, that's quite simple. You go to my website, then you scroll down, you will see two blog posts regarding this ODE45 solver. The one being in German and the other one being in English. So if you click on the one being in English, then you find a link in the blog post which is quite short which will redirect you to this document and this will explain step by step how our system looks like, how we rearrange the system in terms of equations and here you can see the equation. So if we make it a bit bigger right here, this is the equation where we say y dot and y double dot and express it in terms of x. Then we have the first entry being x2 and then we have the second expression and if you go back to the script you can see that's exactly what we have defined right here. So very straightforward. You just have to grasp the idea on how to actually transform the system. So feel free to download the PDF. It's not on my Patreon page, so it's freely available for you to learn more about these types of differential equations as well as the ODE45 solver. Also a nice side information here is that the ODE45 solver that we used is a solver which uses the so-called Runge-Kutta method. And if you want to know more about that, I can show you in another video how this actually works. It's not very straightforward. If you know that you want to use the solver, you can just type that in. If you want to really grasp the concept on how the runge kutta method works, then you should maybe have a look at that or I can do a video about it. So let me know in the comment section what you want to have. Moving on. So if we just run it in a few moments, so we say we create a figure, then we have a for loop. And this for loop iterates over the masses. So we don't say we want to have a mass of only one kilogram, but we want to go from one to 10 kilograms in steps of one. 
So I just substitute for this differential equation, I change the m right here, and this will adapt my m for each loop, so to speak. In this line here, I simply assemble all the values into a big matrix. Here I defined 10 colors, one color for each mass. Then I'll create a figure, it's pretty straightforward. Then I call the color as well as the position of the color with C, M. And I use curly braces here because I have defined C, which is a cell array. So I have to use the curly braces right here. Then we do some definitions for the legend. Then we plot our title, X label, Y label, very straightforward. And don't worry too much about this command here. This just plots the plot on a specific position on my screen. So if you plot this right now, you get the following results, quite messy as you can see because I replotted 10 masses with our parameters right here. So you can just adapt the code and then get, let's say, mass from 1 to 5 kilogram. But that's what I wanted to show you because uh, for my students or for some of them, it was not very straightforward on how to plot multiple plots, especially, the, especially on how to define the legend and how to write that down. It's a bit tricky because you have to tr use the transpose here, etc. But you can have a look at that by having a look at the GitHub repository, which I'll post down in the comment section. So let's say if we want to have a look at this time that I mentioned earlier on, where we said that we don't want to go in increments, but jump from 0 to 20 and let the solver decide what steps to take. So we will do that right now. We say define a second time vector, and this takes the value 0 and 20. So what we then say is uh, we go down, we just copy this line, paste it, and this gives us a T2 as well as a Y2 and takes a time 2. Initial conditions stay the same as well as the parameters and solver options. Then we will activate that one right here. That's for the, for the second example. And, in, and instead of just marking everything down there, and uncommenting it. What I like to do, and which, which is a cool trick in my opinion, is to define something called a plot token. That's how I call them, which is one in this case. And if I say, if this plot token is zero right now, please execute this whole bunch of commands right here, which I don't want in this case, because I want to have focus on this here. So I said plot token is one and the condition is not fulfilled. So it will not execute this whole code right here. Okay. So if we now just execute this code right now, we can see right here, it looks like this, where we have the distance as well as the velocity. So this is not acceleration, this is velocity, my bad. So we would have to change that to uh, velocity right there. So it would look like this. And if we zoom in, you can see the following that the red and the green curve are actually the velocity. However, the green curve is the automatic time stepping, if you want to call it like that. The solver has taken the time steps itself in order to get the solution. For the red curve, we have defined, as you might remember, the time vector explicitly. So we said from zero to 20 as the other vector, but we said with explicit time steps of 0 0.01 seconds. And that's why the green curve is a bit more accurate, if you want to say it like that, than the green curve. So that was the last thing I wanted, I wanted to tell you about the system. In case you have any questions, please put them down in the comment section. I would be happy to answer you. And as I mentioned, make sure to hit the subscribe button, activate the notification bell, and as always, make sure to keep engineering your mind. See you in the next one.